All right, welcome. And I'm wearing Seattle. I've got a Seattle hat, Seattle t-shirt. They don't have jerseys yet. The jerseys are supposed to be available next summer. So for now, if I want to wear Seattle, I've got a, a hat, which is black. It's not blue, it's black and, and a blue shirt. I, I, I don't know, when I ordered them, I thought they'd probably be about the same color, but nah, it's 2020, so I make them the same color. So I want to talk a little bit about UFAs. We're about a month ahead of UFAs being signed. And all we hear about is Petrangelo this, Krug that. And, and there are some names that are out there. Hoffman's another one. But I, I want to talk about guys who are under the radar. And, and from the hockey that I've watched over the last few years, I try to watch as many games as possible. And I mean all of them. I mean, like, if there's 13 games on in a day, I take a deep breath and I go, all right, I'm going to try to watch as much of all 13 games as I can. And then I try to get the review up as soon after those games as I can. Sometimes it's split up into the... the the review of the matinee games and then the review of the late games or sometimes all 13 games are on in the evening and that's just a fun night so i try to watch as much as i can because i i don't want to come from a position of ignorance when it comes to certain players and with certain teams as well so i do watch them equally and by that i mean that if boston's winning a game seven nothing i, I turn it off i go over to the other game that might be three to two and it doesn't matter if it's montreal and pittsburgh if it's arizona and florida i don't care who else it is if I'm going over to another game because it's closer, I, I don't care who's playing. I've, I've turned off Vancouver games because they're lopsided, whether they're winning or losing, Dallas, Boston. Who I'm cheering for doesn't matter when I'm watching the games. I try to watch them equally. So with these seven players I've come up with, I've tried to come up with seven guys that I've been impressed with at different times, not necessarily this year. These are guys who I think, under the radar, could be pretty smart pickups, and, and might not cost as much as some of the other sexy picks when it comes to the, the, the big big name signings. So, all right. Number seven on this list. And I'm going to put up their age, too, because I think that's important. Thank you, Toronto, for Josh Levo, who's 27 years of age. And I'm not saying he's going to leave Vancouver, but let's be honest, the Canucks in their current cap situation either they keep levo and then they have to lose somebody else or levo may become that cap problem 36 games seven goals and 12 assists he was injured throughout uh the end part of the the regular season and then when they came out of the pause he didn't play then either so if levo's healthy for next season if he's able to make that comeback he could be a really good probably pretty cheap signing for a team who could chip in the odd goal here and there and he's a pretty good player. And he just needs he needs to get a break when it comes to the injuries. And, and I think he could be a 15-20 goal scorer for a team if given the right option. So yeah, so Levo, I'm, I'm putting at number 7 on the list. Number 6, and the, the, the ranking them is kind of odd, but yeah, might as well. Number 6, um, the only goaltender on the list. Most of the goalies we've been hearing rumors about and talk about anyways. Uh, age 31, Aaron Dell. And you know what's interesting about Aaron Dell? His 907 save percentage. So San Jose had a miserable season. And it's possible that Dell ends up being out. There's, I can't see them having the same goaltending tandem. It's possible it's Martin Jones that they lose and that Dell sticks around. But if Dell goes to the free agent market, to me, he could be another Darcy Kemper. He could be a guy who's cast off and kind of forgotten about, but ends up becoming a, a pretty big deal down the road. He's not that old. And he had a pretty good year behind a team that wasn't very good. San Jose's defense was mostly a misadventure this year. And so Dell's numbers were better than Jones's for the most part. And, and I thought he had a pretty decent year. And I still think the ability is there. So yeah, uh, Aaron Dell, 31 years of age, 907 safe percentage. And I've got him at number six again. Because I, I think he's capable of... of maybe being a pretty decent backup or 1B option as well. Uh, all right, I'll put this guy at, at number five because I think there's probably less of a chance. But Justin Schultz, he's only 29. Feels like he's been around forever. He had a rough year. He had a rough year for Pittsburgh, and this is after last year. He, he had a rough year. So he's not going to be an expensive signing. Wherever he goes, he's not going to be an expensive signing. And three goals and nine assists this year could be a good third-pairing pickup. Or, potentially, if he can get back to where he was a few years ago, he might end up being a huge 
uh, signing for a team that's looking for some depth on the blue line, and and he's still young enough to turn it around. I didn't see it this year. I'm not going to pretend that I saw all kinds of, of signs that he's ready to return to top four form or anything like that, but I, I still think he's young enough that he's able to turn that around, especially as a defenseman. Defensemen will usually play until they're older. So, yeah, uh, Schultz I have then at five. At four, yeah, due to age, I'll put him at four. I know it seems weird to say this because Carl Soderberg is only 34. But 70 games played, 17 goals, 18 assists, 35 points. And again, on the right contract, coming out of Arizona, his numbers could be better next year. Arizona was a team that struggled with their offense all season. And I could see Soderberg being a nice signing by a team that nobody pays much attention to at the time. And it ends up being a, a, a pretty big deal that we look back a year from now and say, hey, that was a pretty smart signing. Carl Soderberg, uh, a good pickup by them. And again, I think his asking price will probably be lower than what he was being paid this year by Arizona, which I think was $4.5 million. So I could see him at 34 years of age signing a two-year deal for less than that and ending up being a pretty good signing. All right, uh, number three on the list. I'll go with a local boy here. People aren't going to be all that surprised. I was impressed with him in Anaheim. Mixed bag when he was in Philly. Probably goes to free agency, probably doesn't get re-signed by Philly, and that's Derek Grant. Derek Grant showed in Anaheim this year he can be a pretty good player. Uh, I, I think he's he's a good bottom six option, third line guy. And the 15 goals in 56 games, not too shabby. He proved he can put the puck in the net and that he does have some talent as well. So, uh, again, Derek Grant probably can be had for not a whole lot of money uh, under the current economic situation the NHL finds itself in. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if, if Grant ends up going somewhere. And, again, these are just under the radar. I'm not picking, like, so if people are like, where's 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 Hoffman? This list is bunk. Where's where's Markstrom? It's under the radar, guys. It's not over the radar or on the radar or in the middle of the radar or super radar. Oh, I've spoken. I've said too much. Number two. I think he's going to stay. I'm going to say right now, I would be very surprised if Craig Smith actually hits the market. I think that Nashville... With their issues with goal scoring as it is, I think they need to keep Craig Smith. Craig Smith, hot and cold player, 69 games, 18 goals, 13 assists, 31 points. It feels like most of those 18 goals were scored over a very short period. But when he's hot, he's very good. And I thought he played well this year. I thought he was better this year than last year, for instance. But Craig Smith, again, we're looking at guys who could potentially be had for a little bit less than we might expect. And might be the kind of signing that on, on October 9th we say, well, Craig Smith is signed with, I'll just say Toronto or Vancouver, wherever, uh, for, for a three-year deal for, for three and a half million per. Yeah. And then we look back a year from now and go, you know what? He was the perfect setup. He was the perfect guy to get for the wing. And he ends up scoring, you know, 25 goals. That, well, that was such a smart move. So I think, I think Craig Smith could be an under-the-radar guy. And then number one, and he may not hit the market either, he may not. And up until the play-in, I figured, you know what? I can't see Evgeny Dadanov hitting the market. But coming out of that huge letdown, with the news that apparently they might be looking at cutting their budget, and they're not the only team that's going to do it, Dadanov may be the guy that ends up on his way out, and it might be Hoffman that ends up staying there. If Dadanov becomes a free agent at age 31, 69 games, 25 goals, 22 assists, 47 points, he could low-key be a huge addition for a team. And so, to me, Dadanov would be a guy that, if, if I was a GM, this is the one that I'd be saying, you know, if he hits the market, I want to get him. I, I, I might see other guys who might score more goals, than might, but they those guys will probably cost me more money. And with the, the cap being where it is, I could see a team going out, getting Schultz, Dell, and Levo and being able to stay under cap. That way you're getting a defenseman forward and a goaltender and it doesn't cost you a ton under the cap. And a year from now we're talking about how smart it is. So this isn't about, you know, the big stars on, on the UFA market. 
But uh, let me know which which player that is potentially an unrestricted free agent in less than a month's time that you think could be a pretty solid addition on probably for cheap. Uh, a guy who's probably not going to cost you a ton of money, uh, which is what I was looking at with this list. I didn't want to look at anybody that I thought would cost a lot of money. And uh, again, I also decided to lean towards guys that were maybe a bit younger and so Soderberg's the oldest at 34. Anybody who's 35 or older, I thought, eh, I don't know. And and again, it's because once once players reach that point where they start to to lose their scoring touch, it can go fast. So I went with people who are a bit younger than some of the others. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And yeah, so I'm wearing the one team that can't sign any of these players this year, but maybe They'll sign one of these guys next year in Seattle. We'll see. Or maybe one of them ends up being an expansion pickup. Be great if all seven of them did, and then I'd look like I was psychic. But anyways, uh, in some weird, odd way that I was completely unintentional. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And again, let me know in the comments section below which free agent you're going to be keeping your eye on uh, who might be under the radar. Not not the Hoffmans, not Markstrom, not Toffoli, not the, the big guys. Not the ones we're all talking about out of the major centers, but maybe guys who've played for teams that don't get talked about as much. Thank you guys for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.